All right, so we are here in front of the New York Public Library, and this is the third mission in the game. The game takes place in 1991, three years after the events of Ghostbusters 2. That's especially relevant because the game was written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, and we have all the original talent back. So this is a true thematic sequel to the films. Bill Murray too, right? Yeah, Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, Harold Ramis, Dan Aykroyd, Walter Ath William Atherton, and Annie Potts are all back. We've got all their VO in the can. We've got all their likenesses in the game. What about Sigourney Weaver or uh, um, uh, Rick Moranis? Uh, no, those those are the only two that didn't participate. So you are the fit. You play as the fifth Ghostbuster. You play as a rookie, the experimental equipment technician. And we say equipment instead of weapons because these guys are scientists, not soldiers, and we want to stay true to that. And that was actually part of what Dan Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd had to say was. You know, these guys are researching as they go, and we're learning as we go, and that's kind of how the story progresses, is on the fly as you go. We wanted to keep a narrative structure and really make it feel like you're watching a movie take place, but you're in the middle of it. That's also why there's no HUD, is we have all the information you need as readouts on the PKE meter and on the proton pack. What's the PKE meter like? Uh, how does it help you through the game? Well, it's like right here, we are scanning the slime and we see the ectoplasmic residue from where the ghost flew through. It works as a hot and cold meter, kind of like a dousing rod. And the color that it displays shows what you're looking at. So right there when it went red, it, it detected an enemy present. Otherwise it's going to be green when it's just detecting kind of something amiss in the environment. Now what about the damage uh, meters? How does that work? Well right there when he um, pointlessly destroyed that statue there, um, with malicious intent, apparently, um, we were charged for the damage that we were done. That was done, but you, as the rookie, don't have to foot that bill, because Walter Peck and the EPA are now in charge of the Ghostbusters and answer to the mayor. The mayor rode to re-election on a pro-Ghostbusters platform, and so you're a city-sanctioned um, public service now. So. Peck has to pay the money that you dis you cause damage for. But when you catch a ghost, you get to keep that money to upgrade. So in a given mission, you'll cause $50,000 worth of damage, but you'll get about $5,000 to be able to upgrade your equipment with. So speaking of destruction, you'll notice how everything in this room is getting destroyed, and this book golem guy formed out of the actual books that were laying on the tables. That's part of the infernal physics engine this Gollum technology. Uh, Infernal is the Terminal Reality's proprietary in-house engine. They, their president, Mark Randall, wrote it himself. And the physics portion, which you're seeing so heavy in this room, is called Velocity. So there, he, he, gra he grappled onto the Gollum's head, which was a lamp. He ripped it off the body, and that broke the psychic connection with all those other physics objects, allowing him to destroy the thing. That was a corporeal ghost, which means it's a ghost that you actually destroy as opposed to one you trap, which is an ethereal ghost, like so, a class 5 full roaming vapor, like Slimer. So all this, all this is explained during the game is it's all, yeah. it, it's very scientific and research. And yeah, and you go, the hub that you go back to between different levels is the firehouse. And Egon's always giving you upgrades and stuff. You know, you're the guinea pig that he straps all his new, newest gadgets onto because you're expendable. They don't even want to know your name as the rookie because of what happened to the last guy. Oh, that's great. So that was the ghost from the very first movie then, right there? Yeah, yeah, that was Eleanor Twitty, and you're back here not only to try to catch her because they, ra remember, they ran. Yeah. They didn't bother to try to catch her. You're back here looking for the Gozer Codex, which if you, did, I don't know if you saw the posters outside of the library that said um, Gozer Mac exhibition, but you're actually looking for part of this. Uh, it's a historical book that she, that this ghost may or not may or may not be hiding in the bowels of the library, to help explain some of what's going on in the city. There's a new massive disturbance that happens basically on one of your first days of work. So the Ghostbusters bring you along to try to figure out what's going on, and the story spirals out from there. Okay. So can you can you give us anything about like the main enemy of the game, like? Uh well, I know, I mean, you're going to see revisits. If, you, if you've looked online at all, you're going to know that you'll see Slimer in the game and you'll see State Puff Marshmallow Man in the game. But beyond that, we want to keep it a little more secret. 
the game's going to be coming out this fall, kind of close to Halloween, so you won't have to wait that much longer to find out. So what, what's going on with the voice work? Like, uh, oh, oh, hang on. Never mind. I already I asked that question. I'm going to put the mic up here. Thanks so much for sticking together. New plan is fan out. Flexible approach, Ray. There are two hostile spirits roaming around in here. Yes, sir. Two that we know about. Now I got you. What? Oh, kid, look out! It's coming your way! Temperature's dropping. Event imminent. Brace yourselves. <laughs> Guys. Alright. Okay, so where's, where's Bankman right now? Bankman is just simply not in this particular level. There are different, different levels who will have different combinations of Ghostbusters with you, and there will be a few different spots where all five are fighting at once. And you don't give them orders. In fact, you don't really talk at all. You're just kind of there as an observer, doing your, just doing your job, like the following them around. Thing. Yeah. Like doing what you need to do to help them out. And you'll hear them strategizing over the radio as they go. Like they're constantly you know, reassessing the situation and changing their course of action, and you just have to try to keep up. No human would stack books like this. Nope. Absolutely not. Must be the work of some type of entity. So what about like re uh, uh, um, interacting with like other uh, uh, characters? Like, is there, are there any humans that around in places when you're hunting ghosts? There are. Um, there are actually humans that are terrorized by ghosts and kind of stuck in corners and alleys and whatnot out of the way. And if you find them and rescue them and scare the ghost away from them, you get credit for that, and that's you know leads towards one of the one of the various achievements that you can get. There's also pickups where things are hidden throughout the world that if you find them with the PKE meter, they show up at the fire station and there's there's backstory, and that also works towards an achievement. What about health and uh, and what have you? Like how how does a, a health meter work? Uh, when you get hurt, when you get hurt, the screen kind of starts turning red, and you know to kind of back out, and uh, around the perimeter of the screen. And you can also scan ghosts and check them in the in the Tobin Spirit Guide. Cabby, can you do that? Can you bust out the Tobin Spirit Guide? So the pause menu is also the PKE meter, as you can see here. And if you go over to the Tobin Spirit Guide page, you can highlight and check out the known behaviors, strengths, weaknesses, and backstory of each ghost as you go. So the object is to completely fill in the Tobin Spirit Guide. So you're going to have to take the time out in most of your big battles if you really care enough. If you're a completionist, yeah. you're going to dodge that ghost long enough to scan him and then continue with the fight. You may even go into the pause menu to see exactly what his weakness may or may not be. Now, uh, is it like a game over if you cross the streams? Well, in the single player campaign, you're playing with the pros. These guys have been doing it for years. They're not going to let you kill them yeah. with crossing the stream. So they'll just stop shooting, re, 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 you know, change their formation and continue. But in multiplayer on Xbox Live and PlayStation Network, it's you and three of your buddies playing as the original four ghosts. Unprofessionals. Yeah. So you're, you you got not you got noobs playing as playing the part of the professionals. And in multiplayer, if you and your buddies choose to cross the streams, then that could be bad. That could be bad. That's your own decision to make. That's hilarious. What happens if you cross the streams? Does the screen just go black? Uh, well, it might be a little more graphic than that, okay. to some degree. I well, mean, it's still a game. It's still a game for you know. It's still a T-rated game, but I get you. Okay. Well, how how do you trap ghosts? Well, the biggest part about the trapping mechanic is we wanted you to feel like the ghost on the other end of the beam is strong and it's a powerful entity that doesn't want to get captured. It's not just going to give, give up lightly. It's not going to give up the ghost that easily, so to speak. Cabby just happens to be really good and has played this a million times. <laughs> so he makes it look easier than it is. But it's like a fishing mechanic, yeah. where once you have him in the hook, you can use the six axis control if you want, or dual stick. And you got to wear him down, kind of beat him against the wall, stun him so you can trap him. 